Sure, I've had my run-ins with New Zealand in the past. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been paying attention over the last few weeks, I'm currently in a war with Facebook and New Zealand. Apparently I was extremely racist towards them according to Zuckerberg and Facebook. Now this war started after I released a video making fun of the Kiwis, something Australians have been doing for many many years. This video was deemed racist and full of hate speech and I was banned from Facebook. I even ended up on their version of the project. Isaac Butterfield and he got one of his videos banned from Facebook recently because the content was deemed to be racist to New Zealand. I know. Let us explain. Yeah, they've got their own version. How fucking disgusting is that? But I'm a good guy. I'm a nice fellow. I'm the Buttsman after all. So I thought I'd offer an olive branch to the people of New Zealand and I'd go over there as a part of my world tour that I'm actually heading over to the UK in just a couple of weeks. If you're in the United Kingdom, make sure you check out the link below and get those tickets, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a cracker. So I made my way across the Tasman. But before I even got on the plane, there was hurdles. The passport that I've had for years went missing. Allegedly, I gave it to the UK authorities so I could get a visa to go over to the UK to do my show. Allegedly. But in reality, who knows where it went. So I applied for an emergency passport. But to get that passport, I needed my birth certificate. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It was gone. Where did it go? I don't know. Mum said I still had it, but I don't fucking know. I think mum's full of shit. It was a conspiracy, ladies and gentlemen. Something, someone didn't want me venturing to New Zealand. So then I had to go down to Sydney and talk my way through the bureaucracy and then my photos that I applied for this passport. They weren't good enough. They were too blurry. Taken by Australia Post. Ha! Oh, this is a government conspiracy if ever I've heard of one. Forget 9-11. Forget bloody JFK. This is the real conspiracy. I couldn't get this passport sorted. I even went to the passport office in Australia and showed everyone. I went around, I went, here's my blue tick. Here's my blue tick. I showed him my Instagram. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. I didn't do that. I went there and I got the passport. Anyway, long story short, I got on that plane, but here's the thing. This is where things went a little bit pear-shaped. I landed in New Zealand. I said cheer, bro, to the first Kiwi I saw. Then I got randomly selected. That's what happens when you got a beard. When I left that airport, when I left customs, I found something horrifying. We have been taught our entire lives that New Zealand is this beautiful picturesque location with cinematic shots like this. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous. Wonderful. We've seen Lord of the Rings. We know what New Zealand is like. But we're wrong. This isn't the land of the Great White Cloud. This is the land of the Great White Lie. New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, and this is some heartbreaking news, is not real. It doesn't exist. In fact, all that's there is a tiny, desolate shithole. It's only about maybe 50 football fields long and about 20 wide. It's just sand. It looks like a Mad Max film there. And all that happens there is this one resort, a two-star resort, and you are held at gunpoint as you're taken into this resort and you are offered 35 New Zealand dollars, which is like, I think it's about $7.50 Australian, to keep your mouth shut for life. They threaten you with horrible threats, such as, we are gonna fuck you like we fuck sheep. Horrible threats. When you arrive in New Zealand, this place that definitely doesn't exist at all, you immediately become a prisoner of Mordor, a P-O-M-D. Uh, it's very, very horrifying. You are then locked in this horrifying room and all you have to watch is New Zealand TV. It's terrible. You only get out for one hour a day plus 15 minutes and that 15 minutes is exercise. And the only thing you're allowed to do in New Zealand for exercise is the haka. 15 minutes of the haka every single day for a week. I had red little thighs. Red little thighs. The only thing you have to eat is not haggis, but it's shagus. It's not the sheep's stomach. It's the sheep's anus. And it's obviously quite stretched out being in New Zealand. <laughs> Surrounding this desolate shithole is a wall, a giant wall that is keeping everybody in, keeping these lies, secrets, and conspiracies enclosed in the one area. Only one man in history has ever escaped 
that wall. And that man is Sir Edmund Hillary. He was so good at climbing walls, he went on, he just kept climbing, he ended up climbing Everest. But it was no feat in comparison to climbing the Great Wall of New Zealand. The Kiwi Prime Minister, Jacinta Ardern, is... She's the warden. And she walks around picking bits of sheep meat, bit of lamb out of her giant fucking tooth. And banning guns as she walks through. She's a terrifying creature. But I made it back to Australia. To the beautiful, oh, the most gorgeous part of the world. And thankfully, I was okay. But I was left with a lot of questions. Are the New Zealanders we encounter here in Australia, are they all actors? Well, I have some pretty horrifying evidence that all the Kiwis in Australia are actors. Are you ready for this? Actor. 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 What I'm going to do to deal with this horrifying tragedy, this conspiracy that has turned out to be true, that New Zealand isn't real at all, it's just some horrifying island, is we are going to sell New Zealand on eBay. <laughs> and we're gonna do it for a good cause, we're gonna raise some money, all right? Let's turn this into a positive, ladies and gentlemen. The money will be split 50-50, and they will be going to two very different charities. The first charity, and I'm an ambassador of these guys, is Swiss Aid. In a world where mental ill health kills six times more soldiers than war, Swiss Aid exists to help veterans so they can stop bearing their mates. Swiss 8 is a health promotion charity founded by combat veterans and their team creates proactive mental health tools for veterans and everybody else. Now ladies and gentlemen, they are great guys. I know the guys behind it, absolute legends and they're helping out veterans with mental health issues so let's get behind them. And the other half will be donated to Greyhounds as pets. The GAP program are absolutely amazing. They take Greyhounds who have been treated terribly by the Greyhound racing industry and they help people go out there and find their appropriate Greyhound and give them homes. They're a beautiful people. I've used the GAP program to get Rosie pictured here and Rosie absolutely is the most beautiful uh, soul that I've ever met. She's a beautiful, beautiful creature and she has changed my life for the better. So if you're looking for a pet, go and adopt a Greyhound. They're absolutely beautiful. So Let's help out these great causes. Now, if you are successful in the bidding war and you win the chance to own this shithole, does it mean that you actually get to own New Zealand? Not at all, because I have no power at all. But what you will get is this t-shirt that says not vegan that was given to me by a good motherfucker at a show. Thank you very much. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to send it your way. And that's the deed to New Zealand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get behind that great cause. Go down below, give your money where you can, and let's raise some good money and tell New Zealand to go and get fucked. Be a good motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, meet extincts, and I'll see you all very, 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 very... Fuck, my legs are too sore. Soon.